Pleasant good morning to each and everyone, saints of the In God's Grace Ministries. On this beautiful Sunday morning, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the wonderful Son, in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God. We pray that you know this service edify us, O Lord God, and whatever has been thought to us today, Lord God, help us to incorporate it in our day to day walk with you, Lord God. And I ask you, Father Lord, to equip your man servant, O Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amazing top of the morning to each and every one of you right here, right now. And if at this point in time you're looking at me here, it's because you haven't yet made it to number 307 Southern Main Road, Kunupia. You know, and um, that's where we are located in God's Grace Ministries. And may I greet you in the grace and the peace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Today we're going to have an awesome word. All right. Um, we will be taking a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 49. And um, then we will be proceeding to the book of Revelation. And I want to remind a few of you all also too that you know um you know we came into this year crossing over that threshold from 2021 into 2022 with an awesome and breakthrough word. Remember Jesus breaks barriers. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you all to to understand and apply that to your circumstances to all of you all who are and who have been a part of the In God's Grace Ministries, the discipleship team, to all of you all on knowledge of the word. We train ride recently. We we um vamped train ride uh, the outreach program. And we had an awesome time the other night there. Amen. Hallelujah to all of you all who worship Sister Nicole, to who shared Sister Sister Sinead, Brother, Brother Picky, and all of you guys who were there with us. You know, we had an awesome and a marvelous time. Sister Joan, Sister Chloe, Sister Nikki, Sister Zimone, all of you guys were Sister Jillian, everybody who was there, Tiny Babs, everybody who was there. Amen. Hallelujah and to all of the kids who were there. And we had an awesome Sunday school last week also. All right. Uh, where Sister Anne Marie is in charge of, of that at this point in time you know and um i just want to give god thanks and praise for all of you all who are making this ministry what it is right now you know for playing your parts and for being obedient and faithful to what god has called each and every one of you guys to do amen hallelujah so top of the morning to you guys uh let me just give a few shout outs one time there to pastor Anil, pastor sean pastor Kilton, to pastor ran all of you guys out there give you thanks i give god thanks and praise for each and every one of you you know and i pray that he continues to uplift each and every one of you as you all labor in the vineyard out there in the united states also you know the evangelist dexter friday sambri de la rosa and pastor richardson of the end rock and family you know quite a few of our affiliates there you know so we give god thanks and praise for each and every one of you guys and for the support that you lend also to the in god's grace ministries all right i remember we have support and we are affiliated in different parts of the globe Amen. Hallelujah. We out there in London to pass the green away. Hallelujah. Amen. So may God bless each and everyone. We're going to have, as I say, an awesome word this morning again. You know, um, it's a difference here and in life. So I urge you all to try and come down, get down there, get down to number 307 Southern Main with Knopia, right? And you're going to have an awesome time in fellowship with the saints and company with all the believers in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship, praise, awesome word, testimony you name it all right total ministry amen for the man and the woman in christ jesus um uh some of our contributors also brother brendan um brother ryan the henry's out there in the u.s um brother kendall he's going out for us surgery, so we got you in prayer my brother we know that all things shall be well also sister rosanna and brother mark all right uh quite a few of you guys so i give god thanks and praise for your lives and to the team Listen, let me tell you something. I could not have been blessed. I just want to say thank you for just being so gracious. You know, just for, for being there. You know, I could not have done it by myself. And we are all one body in Christ Jesus. Amen. And to those of you all who have made so many things possible over the last few weeks, Sister Nikisha, thanks for all that you have been doing. You know, I give God thanks and praise for your life also. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Get ready to receive an awesome mood. You should be at Genesis chapter 49, as I said, in God's grace. Good morning. Today's reading will be taken from Romans chapter 7, reading from the New King James Version. Or do you not know 
brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, so that we should bear the fruit of God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. You are reading from the word of God. Thank you. Inviting you to welcome our youth meetings at 7 p.m. sharp on a Friday afternoon. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning. I'm Abriel Saracen. I'm going to be read, doing the Sunday morning reading from Romans chapter 7 to verse 7 and 8. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the, co on the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law for i would not have known com com covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet but sin is taken the opportunity by commandments produced in me all manner of evil desire for apart from the law from apart from the law sin was dead thank you all and enjoy the sunday service hi everyone i am Sinead cyrus again this week with your announcements and i just want to remind you all of the services and the times we have our sunday service both online and the physical building starting at 9 30 a.m on the online session it's going to start from 9 30 and finish at 10 30 but in the physical building we will start at 9 30 and finish at 11 30 a.m we also have our youth session continuing on a friday which will begin at 7 p.m for the younger youths and on sunday it will start at 5 30 p.m for the older youths on a wednesday night starting from 6 30 p.m finishing at 8 30 p.m we have our prayer and bible study where we will come come with your prayer requests come with your questions where we can sit down and discuss everything and edify ourselves in the word of god also Right before our Sunday service, we have our Sunday school session, which I am conducting at the moment. I'm not going to be the only one doing it, but right now, I am conducting the Sunday school service, which is approximately 20 to 30 minutes right before our actual Sunday service, which will be a time for us to go through some key pointers and to get the foundation set and ready right with the key points in the bible the key things that we have to know such as baptism salvation what is the gospel and lots and lots of topics that we're going to cover just to ensure that everyone understands so that there will be no misunderstanding with the actual service which is usually done by pastor Solomon de la rosa also we have this week by the grace of god we, we resume with the train ride session which is usually held at my house at in halls avenue kanam tradition general kunufair and it was an amazing experience. The train right to heaven is a Bible study. Which this Bible study is really geared towards presenting the gospel to anyone who makes themselves available to actually come and hear to understand the key concepts 
in Christianity and to understand what Jesus Christ did for us. It's an amazing, amazing time. It's a very casual setting. You all can come with your little short pants, your t-shirts, feel comfortable and just get in the world. We'll discuss it together and we will learn from each other. So we just want to invite you all to the train, right? Invite you all to our Wednesday um, prayer and Bible study session and we just want you all to become a part of our church service and also we have the women's group meeting coming up on the 30th of april so stay tuned follow us for more information and you know just just continue basking in the presence of god Oh, no. 
can't stop dancing. I can't stop dancing. Can't stop dancing. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop dancing. I can't stop dancing. I can't stop dancing. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising. I can't stop praising. I can't stop praising. You've been too good, Lord. You've been too good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's go in fine. Come on, he has done great things. He has. can't hear you clap your hands right where you are in your living room in your bedroom in your kitchen come on celebrate the Lord if God's been good to you you can celebrate him just like David danced in the Lord's presence I want you to dance in the presence of the Lord right where you are come on Amen. Hallelujah. So Genesis 49. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, let me just um, say shout out to the DDAs, the Commuter Connection. Amen. Hallelujah. The Huggins. Amen. Hallelujah. Abrams. Amen. Hallelujah. To all the De La Rosas who are listening and also hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. To all of the families affiliated with the ministry. All right. May God continue to increase, bless, protect, provide in Jesus' is almighty and in his matchless name. Amen. So today we are in the book of Genesis chapter 49. And I gave quite a you all some time to get there. Right? And we would be reading from verses 1 to verses 12. Alright? And it's an important area for us, for, for us to understand or even begin to just grasp. Because, I mean, we look at things literal. But what I want you all to try to start to get is seeing the spiritual what is behind the literal words in the scriptures you know because every word of the bible every word of the scripture has so much meaning every if and but the everything has so much meaning behind it all right so you have to get in touch with the spirit remember last week we were saying you know ezekiel was taken in the spirit and he was allowed to see all things right so you have to get into the spirit you must be in christ you must be creating that intimacy that relationship between you and jesus christ which is poured out in the pages of these scriptures in this book that we call the bible i remember also we have um the communion coming up after so make sure that the emblems are ready so join with me as we look into the book of genesis chapter 49 right now for the reading today's reading amen and from verses 1 it says and jacob called unto his sons and said gather yourselves together that i may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days now this is the point at which where jacob is about to give up the ghost literally die right so he calls his sons together he calls his 12 sons together and he decides to prophesy into their lives he, he speaks into their lives but he says the things that will befall them in the last days i want you all to get that 
in the last days now the new testament scripture will also have references to that very same in the last days you understand what i'm saying some of them may be familiar to you like second timothy 3 1 where paul says in the last days perilous time shall come all right then we can find it also in the book of acts chapter 2 verses 17 when when um peter decides to to quote from joel the prophecies of joel he says that it, in the last days my spirit will be poured out all right and um second peter chapter 3 verses 3 so you will find references of the in the last days in the new testament that you can grasp from and cooperate and tie what i'm about to show you together because in the last days is a certain period of dispensation all right and it is not when these guys lived i want you all to get that clear all right so we proceed and we're going into verses two from here so it says gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben. So he begins with Reuben. He says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Whew. He tells him, he tells Reuben, after boosting them up there, he says, You will not excel. You will not leave the position, the point that you are in. You will never leave it. Um, and that's something that you know you know we gotta be we gotta we gotta grasp that you know that we could be that we can they can speak into your life and yet still you will not excel right because thou wentest up to thy father's bed then defilest thou it he went up to my couch verse 5 he says Simeon and Levi are brethren instruments of cruelty in their habitations O oh my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they dig the down a wall. Right? So in in when he starts to speak about Simeon and Levi, he starts to speak about their cruelty and how destructive they are, and how destructive they will be to the point that they will cause a wall to fall, they will cause things to fall. They literally are destructive forces. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Right? I will divide. Not just divide. He says, I'm going to divide them, and then scatter them. So it's even harder for them to even try to put it back together again, or even try to put whatever was the genesis, or the beginning of what they, or what they metamorphosized it into, ever again together it, it's so difficult he says i divided it and then i scattered it all right so then we come to judah all right so we only dealing with 40 of the tribes of the sons today right because we have to sub where we are at so we can get to where we're going you feel me all right so he says from this is a judah thou art he who thy brethren shall praise thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies Thy father's children shall bow before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. So where Reuben could next sell, Judah goes up from the position that he is in. And I want to tell some of you all something here right now. You see, sometimes we start off seemingly in a position of excellence. If you, are, you begin in that position of your mindset, sometimes set you in that position then you will not excel but if you come in as judah was then there is so much room to excel you understand what i'm telling you i want to tell some of you guys outside here today to be humble and exercise some humility in all of the things that you're doing and some of the things that you are planning to go into amen so he says um judah is a lion's well from the prey my son thou art going up so we see that elevation he stooped down he crouched as a lion and as a old lion who shall rouse him up so he says the respect that judah will get there is nothing to contest it after a while as a, a, after a while as an old lion who is going to rouse him up who is literally going to interfere with a very skilled old lion so verse 10 the scepter shall not depart from judah and write that down right if you write it down commit it to memory the scepter shall not depart from Judah. It shall not leave Judah. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And until him 
shall the gathering of the people be so this shiloh here now we have it clear and it's very well clarified that shiloh is not a place shiloh is a him shiloh is a person shiloh means the gift from god you feel welcome or the peace of god all right so old hebrew will let you know that when you get into the into the old greek and all that, that is what shiloh means shiloh means the gift of god and it's a him it's a him i hope you're all connecting you know all right so he says now from verse 11 binding his fool onto the vine this him is binding his fool onto the vine he's tying his fool onto the vine and his ass is cold onto the choice vine he washes his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes <laughs> His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Come, bow with me for a minute. Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise even as we go into this word today, O oh Lord God. And we ask you, God, to draw out the meat of it all. Help us, O oh Lord God, to receive what you're about to show us as we place even an atmosphere into the atmosphere of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, O oh Lord God, and the fear and reverence to you, O oh Lord. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity right now to share this fellowship as saints to come under one umbrella, to come under you, O oh Lord God, to stand in your glory, to bask O Lord God in your power we thank you Lord God and bless all things today every word that is about to be spoken and every word that's about to be heard Father God we place a healing also in the atmosphere and we thank you Lord God for hearing our prayer and answering in Jesus is almighty and in his matchless name Amen Hallelujah I remember we gotta apply the word alright so um, the scepter shall not depart from Judah remember keep that don't let that slip from it that very important now the whole reason why the scepter cannot depart from Judah, the scepter is uh, uh, the emblem of of the kingly position, right? Of who reigns, right? Who is in the position of of the kingship? Okay, the king. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah. So it shall not depart from the tribe of Judah. How could the scepter not depart from the tribe of Judah? Remember, this prophecy at the beginning is for in the last days right remember what verses one says i may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days and i told you there are references to the last days also in the new testament but we see here that the scepter shall not depart from judah in the last days the scepter cannot depart from judah and we know who the lion of judah is the lion of judah is jesus christ remember that amen i will say amen say just give god some praise right now the lion of judah is jesus christ and the scripture is saying from Genesis, the prophetic word that Jacob gave unto his sons, that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter departed from David. It, it went and it, to Solomon and it departed from Solomon and it went to Rehoboam. And the scepter continuously departed going down the line of the kings of Judah until it got to Jesus Christ. And the reason why the scepter cannot depart from Judah anymore is because Jesus Christ has defeated death. Amen, hallelujah. Jesus Christ has defeated death. So, if this prophecy pertains to the days, the last days, and it aligns now with the fact that the scepter cannot depart from Judah, which means that the last days began when the scepter could not depart from Jesus Christ, which was the resurrection. You feel where I'm coming from? So the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the gospel, which saves, because according to Romans 1 16, that is the power of God and the salvation, is the fact and the consequence that brings us to this point that the scepter cannot, it shall not depart from Judah. Because Jesus Christ had died. He was buried and he rose again and he will not see death and death will not see him. Death has no sting. Oh death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? So the scepter cannot depart from my Lord. The scepter cannot depart from your Lord. Which means that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Fire upon the enemy today. You hear what I'm telling you? King of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. The scepter, you just say into your environment right now that you stand under the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The scepter shall not depart. His rule and dominion shall not be contested. It shall not be overthrown. It cannot be, it cannot be 
catapult in no kind of way, form, or fashion. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. You understand what I'm coming from? Ha, let me take you some. Let me take you some. Let me take you some. So we go into the book of Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation real quick. Revelation chapter five, right? Revelation chapter five. Now I can tell you this thing by heart, you know, but I want you all to get there, right? Right, Revelation chapter five, and some of these things you all have to start to commit to memory, all right, so that you can, so that you can minister, all right, so that it can minister to you. If you don't remember, it, remember I'm saying you got to remember. It. If you don't remember, it, then you can't remember. It. So everything you had to remember, it, you know, make it a part of you. It will not become a part of you unless you get into the word. You feel me? So remember it, remember it, remember it, remember it. So here he says in, in chapter five. Right, he says in chapter 5, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book sealed with seven seals. I want you to get this, get this, get this, get this, get this. And I heard the voice of an angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals? I want you to remember that to it. Here he said, Who, here's the question, who is worthy to open the book? And lose the seals. Remember, it's it, there's a process. It's not normally if you have a book, right? That's that that has that kind of precedence. You have to open a seal before you can open a book. But this book, it says, who can open the book and then lose the seals? Who is worthy enough to do that? So the scriptures then come and says that no man in the heaven, no on it, no under the earth. So it shows us three domains. Right? Then it couldn't open the book. So John says that he started to cry. He says, I started to cry. He says, and then one of the elders, look, look at me, verses 5. He says, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. For the lion, come on, read with me here right now. For behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Again, I want you to understand the process. It comes like a letter. If a letter comes to you, the letter comes sealed. Right? So you have to break the seal to get to the letter. Or oh, let's say this book, the scriptures, the Bible, right? Itself, right? The Bible itself sealed. So someone places a seal on it. But this this one has seven seals. But this one is saying that you have to open the book and then lose the seals. So the process for us here now is something different than how it would normally be done open the book and loose the seals and i beheld and lo verse 6 in the midst of the throne and the four and twenty elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god which are going out into all of the world so john john and as i looked I saw in the midst of the 24 elders a lamb as if it had been slain, having seven eyes, seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God, which are sent out into all the world. As I looked, I saw a lamb that was slain. Let's just read on for a little bit. Verse 7 And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty others fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the praise of the saints. And they sung a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And beloved believers, if you ain't ever glorify God before, glorify Him right now. Because why does John is describing to you? Right? When he keeps saying that he saw this lamb that was slain. And then he comes again and he says, and the lamb that was slain. John is describing to you the sacrifice. And the sacrifice is Jesus Christ. The lion became the lamb. Right? The lion of Judah became the lamb and the scepter shall not depart from judah so it comes and it shows us even from the book of genesis 
It comes and it shows us when it tells us that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Comes and shows us the gospel of the gospel that saves the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Because if there was no resurrection, then the scepter would have to pass down again. But the scepter cannot be moved. The scepter shall not depart because Jesus Christ has defeated death and he will never die again. Amen. Hallelujah. So he is the slain. So every time John tells you about the slain, John is referring you to the sacrifice. Right? The sacrifice. That's what John telling you. Every time he said, I see the lamb that was slain. I see him. I'm seeing the lamb that was slain. He's saying, I'm seeing the sacrifice. So it's the sacrifice. is what saves beloved believers in Christ Jesus. Nothing we do. Only what he did. The sacrifice of God is what saves. And that's all you could see. Anytime you see anything else. You are not seeing or understanding this gospel that saves. Anytime you see anything else. If anyone, any church, any pastor, any reverend, any bishop tells you anything that causes you to see anything other than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The lamb that was slain. They ain't get it right. They ain't get it right. They ain't get it right. And I want you all to get it right. Because a lot of people out here, a lot of people who go to church too, going to hell because they ain't getting it right the only thing you gotta see when you save is the slain lamb nothing else none of your works ain't got none to do with it your lifestyle ain't got none to do with it all you gotta be seeing is just what john seen here in the book of revelation and that's just the slain lamb the slain lamb come on you feel where I'm coming from? And that's why a lot of people are going to end up behind Jesus Christ. Like, Lord, Lord. I'm going to say, I don't know you. I don't know you. You work. But we did this in your name. Because there are people who in the churches right now going straight to hell. Straight to hell. Don't talk about those who are under the law. They definitely spiritual adultery. You hear what I'm telling you guys? One thing you got to see. When you say you are a believer in Christ, and that is the sacrifice, the slain lamb, nothing else. That's all they saw. That's all John saw. That's all the 4 and 20 elders are saying that they are seeing, the slain lamb. How clearer could it be for you? How clearer could it be? Hallelujah. All right? So we got to understand who we are and how we have become who we are. Because the lamb, the slain lamb, who is the lion, was worthy. And able to open the book. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Amen. Just give him some praise right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me just let me just show you something else. Let me just show you something else before we move on. Right? I want you all, I want you all to understand something before we move on. Now there's a reason why the book had to be opened before the seven seals were loosed. Alright, there's a reason why. Get this clearly because I want you all to be, I want you all to be put study persons who can aptly um be able to share the scriptures right and to to cause others to understand this thing called salvation and being saved being born again all right there's a reason why the book had to be open and then the seals loose beloved believers the book is the book of life amen hallelujah the same book of life that you will find in revelation chapter 18 verse 7 the same book of life you will find referenced in Ephesians. The same book of life you will find referenced in Ephesians chapter 1. The same book you will find referenced in the book of John chapter 17. Right? It's the same book of life which was written from the foundation before the foundation of the earth. The book of life contains the names of those who are saved. I want you to stay with me now. The book of life contains the names of those who are saved. My name. My name your name and those who have believed in the sacrifice who are only seeing that the sacrifice is all that was necessary for them to be saved the book of life when this day reaches in heaven that the angel proclaims with the loud voice who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals that is the day of the rapture that is the day that the believers in Christ, those whose names are written in the book of life, shall be retrieved from the earth. I want you to stay with me. The reason why it has to be opened first is so that we will not be part 
of the tribulation period of the seven seals when they become loosed you understand what i'm saying the church will not experience the the cataclysmic events of destruction and the, and troubles that are about to take place on the earth because of that that is the reason why the book has to be open for this when the book is open then revelation takes place and all whose names are contained in the book shall be redeemed according to the scriptures here out of every kindred so it ain't got no race no color no creed ain't got nothing to do with it out of every nation so where we live ain't got nothing to do with it out of every people on the earth whether you be chinese black white indian asian like myself whoever you are you're going to be redeemed because of the sacrifice of jesus christ which is the only thing that is going to save you and that's the only thing that has you in the book of life which was written before the foundation of the earth when a man becomes saved beloved believer tomorrow morning the book is not then opened and his name written in the book was his name was in the book before the foundation of the earth which shows god's omnipotence his preeminence predestination for knowledge of all who today right now would understand what i am saying if they're hearing it for the first time and believe that jesus christ and only what he did is responsible for your salvation and if you believe that then you are saved and born again and have experienced a spiritual baptism amen hallelujah I should give god some praise <laughs> just give him some praise all right all right all right all right i know i know you all now might be now grasping it for the first time i know kind of understanding it for the first time but we've been through the book of revelation countless times last year so i urge you to try to join with us with one of our programs one of our bible study programs so when we do this year you will not miss a thing all right hallelujah amen as a matter of fact we have the book of revelation in three volumes from volume 1 to 7 chapter 1 to 7 7 to 14 and to the end of the book if you need it as a resource available at the in god's grace ministries all right hallelujah original stuff amen so chapter 4 in the book of revelation i just want to take you back a little bit now chapter 4 here now comes and gives you the first glimpse into the throne room of god all right the first glimpse into the throne room of god so 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 john goes into the throne room and he says immediately i'm taking into the spirit into the throne of my god and he sees the, he gives us a description of god and you know he aligns it to, to sapphire and and burial and all of these stones right sardine stone you know and he says there was a rainbow round about he said it's like like a an emerald i want some people to understand this there is no skin or pigment associated with god neither jesus christ you know people is but but he bronze and he brought that literally is a metallic type of pigment which these people describe and john is trying to give it to you the best that he could but some people who lack wisdom and understanding and who want to align things to the flesh coming and saying that jesus christ is black and it's black and it's black no that ain't it who wants color who wants that color in heaven this this year is a metallic type kind of uh, 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 of description we get in where you all getting color from where where are you all getting color from don't let the enemy or the devil try to cause you to have corrupted thoughts man that you're aligning salvation and you're aligning christianity and you're aligning christ the color and race christ died to remove that so nobody could say that you understand what i'm saying so then he says let's read from verses four and round about the throne were four and twenty elders 20 seats and upon these seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white women and they had on their heads crowns of gold and the thing about it is let me tell you something the leaders the elders in your church need to be as these guys sitting here in the presence of god always in the throne room of god anytime your pastors and your leaders they're not in the throne room of god it will reflect in their ministry and it will reflect also in your life amen hallelujah so what i'm trying to tell you is you must know you must recognize because if you yourself too in the throne room you will see things changing right because this would have a big impact to come you know so let's move on verses five and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god so we keep saying the seven lives the seven lives the seven lives and the seven horns right the seven spirits of god which sent out and it will be encountered in chapter five also right verse six and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal they say is it he the, as i said john is describing this to the best of his ability for you guys for us to understand 
all right so we have to see it now not 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 as as literal as it is but we have to see it from our spiritual eyes that's why jesus christ kept saying he who has eyes to see let him see and he who has ears to hear what the spirit is saying because we have to start to in to receive it in a spiritual manner right and not physically or carnally then we will not grasp the depth of what the spirit is trying to show us in the scriptures so he says it's it's like a glass like Unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. In the midst of the throne, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like the flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. But hear this. This is what I'm telling you. The first of the beasts that we hear about in the book of Revelation, because anytime you hear beasts in the book of Revelation, f- f- to tell you how you guys, your wisdom and your understanding is so complicated. The first of the thing when you hear beasts, you talking 666. People, please. The first of the beasts in the book of Revelation talk about is the beast that in the throne with God. Everything else is a duplication and a replication of what is taking place with God because the devil just trying to replicate what God is doing. Right, so the first set of beasts that you encounter in the book of Revelation is these four beasts who follow eyes be front and behind with the six wing who rest not there, night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, worthy is the king. You feel where I'm coming from? So, what I'm telling you about, listen, listen to what I'm saying, listen, to he that who lived forever and ever, verses 10, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that live it, that live it forever and ever and casting their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created so it gives us the purpose of creation which is to worship God worship God you hear what I'm telling you we gotta bow down like these elders and cast worship listen Worship means that you have to cast the most valuable thing before God. The most valuable thing that you have before God is what worship is about. You feel where I'm coming from? And that's what creates the end. Nobody can worship God for you. You personally have to cast it before God. What is all of the value? Everything, your praise, your glory, your worship, your prayer. Everything of that your being could present before God is what you got to cast before him in worship. So chapter 4 comes and teaches us worship in the most awesome manner. And it's telling us this, that we got to be beasts for worship. We had to be beasts for worship to worship God. Worship ain't no sideline thing. You feel where I'm coming from? We got to be real beasts to worship God. And for him to... It's 24-7. They say they rest not day and night. They rest not day and night. Beloved believers, you know that your spirit intercedes on your behalf. Yes, it does. Your spirit intercedes on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is just an awesome God. Amen. So, I want to take you all somewhere real quick. Right? I want to take you somewhere real quick. Real quick. And then we're going to wrap this up. Amen, hallelujah. I just want you to read two verses in chapter 11. We, we end the revelation today. Amen. One of these days, as I said, I want to take you through the whole entire book. We'll take a couple of sessions, but that is on our Bible study forum. So get with us. Amen, hallelujah. Get with us. We're looking out for you guys. Amen. So here what chapter 11 says in verses 1 and 2. It says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave it out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread under forty and two months. Beloved believers in Christ Jesus. Amen. Is your, you are talking to. You are talking to. As well say one of them. Beloved believers in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you are talking to. Right? Let me tell you something here. So they took John into heaven again. So they gave John this assignment. So they tell John, they said, take your a, a reed. Right? So they give him an instrument to measure. And they tell him, they say, measure everything else. They tell John, measure the altar. 
Measure them or worshiping inside of them. Or they, say, they say, count all of them. Measure everything. They say, but you see, the court that's without the temple, do measure that. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, you're so gracious to give us this knowledge and, and the opportunity just to, just to honor and glorify you. You know, glory be to God. He says, but the court which is without the temple, I really want to cry. I tell you the truth. The court which is without the temple, leave it out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Beloved believers in Christ, you see what God has for you? You see what God has for us, the Gentiles? It ain't got no limits to what God has for us, you know. They say measure it not, you know. You see the space for the Gentiles, the blessings that you all have to receive, the things that has to come into your lives, they ain't got no limits. Just say no limits right now. There's no limitation. God has not placed any limitation. On what we had to receive just because we believe in his sacrifice and just because we believe in this who jesus is you know the scepter shall not depart from judah there ain't no limits just say no limits right now to break every chain every failed circumstance in your life to cause turnaround to take place to remove the addictions to cause cancer to be diminished you just say no limits right now in Jesus' almighty name. Because not me say so and as the scriptures telling you. They say don't measure that place without there. Because that is for the Gentiles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are we we, we, we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. And there's somebody out there too today. I want to tell this. You know, stepping into Christ and to somebody else to certain things now about to manifest into your life. And even into this in God's grace ministries, I speak it and prophesying into it today and into the lives of all of you guys that there is no limit as to what God is about to do in your life, in your life, and in this ministry. There is nothing to hold it because it cannot be measured. There is no limitation to where we are about to go. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. And I'll see you guys for the communion. May God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really enjoyed the time with you guys and sharing this word. And I just want to tell you something too. I mean, I know the word comes across powerfully to you guys, even in the areas and the atmospheres that you are in. And you know, it is a word such as, all right, that once it God is behind it and the Holy Spirit is the author of it, it is going to cause the effect that it has to take in your homes, in your lives. I'm talking about your healing, thing around all of that in your atmospheres, right? But you know, at, at the, the ministry, you know, I take it a step further because I'm in company with the other saints, you know, and empowered. We are empowered by that Holy Spirit there in that one body of fellowship. So it goes a little further. You know, so I'm asking you guys who can make it to come out, all right, and share that time with us. Amen, hallelujah, because, you know, we're going to have our some time knocking down demons and shifting principalities and spinning things around and causing breakthrough to take place in your finances all right healing in your lives and your emotions your spiritual being your physical being in your marriages you name it amen god there's no limits to what he has for you in Jesus' name amen hallelujah so raise your emblems with me right now father god we give you thanks and we do this we do this because it's commanded in the scriptures to do it as often as we come together amen hallelujah it's commanded that we do it as often as it comes together i know some of you all may be accustomed to doing communion whatever but that's not scriptural all right that's an in-house and if we are believers in christ then we have to do things according to how the word instructs it amen hallelujah you all get it right get it right believe what i'm telling you guys get it right amen hallelujah um, it's a sad thing for me to say this but a lot of people who think that they're going to heaven really going to hell all right because of lack of understanding jesus says he who hears 
and understands. He says there's only one quarter of the entire population of the earth is making it to heaven. Right? So he gave us the parable of the so and the four seeds. Three types of germination failed, only one succeeded. And the three types represents three quarters of mankind's existence. Jesus was very mathematical with it. Amen? So get it right. I need you all to get it right. The only thing you have to see for your salvation is the sacrifice. Love you all. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Even as we raise the heavens before you today, this representing your body, O oh Lord God. I mean, you know that this body was broken for us and it is the only way, the only way, O oh Lord God, that we could have been saved by you providing the sacrifice for us, O oh Lord God. And we do this also in remembrance of you and we thank you even right now in Jesus' name. You may break and partake. Hallelujah. And in like manner, he held the cup. And this cup represents, represents the New Testament in his blood. The cup represents the New Testament. The cup represents the New Testament in his blood. So whatever is in the cup holds the power of Jesus Christ and the new covenant, the new agreement that has been made. The cup represents the New Testament in his blood, the contract that we are saved that we are sealed that we cannot lose the salvation that he who keeps it and that's nothing that we have done and that everything that has been spoken here today has no limits and everything that you have to receive there are no limits the cup represents that so father god we give you thanks knowing that your blood has all power as we speak healing as you speak regeneration, as you speak repair, restoration, turnaround, and blessings into each and every one's life. In the almighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Knowing also that you are coming again. We give it thanks. You may partake. Hallelujah. So, I thank you all for being here. Again, to all the affiliates and to all the supporters and to all of y'all who are showing up and are becoming faithful but a shock faithfulness will bring that reward amen hallelujah to all of y'all who joining in on all the various outreaches and the various ministries that we have running i thank each and every one of you guys and i give god thanks for your lives and remember to support the ministry remember to bring your sacrifice so that it can be placed on the altar that's between you and god amen hallelujah i'm telling you bring your sacrifices so it can be placed on the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you all. And this is Pastor Solomon De La Rosa in God's grace.